Well, that was not a very good performance overall, but it's good that we can win without playing well. Like, yeah, Southampton dominated us for most of that game, but we held firm, and that's thanks to Phil Jones, ultimately. Like, he has been sensational this season. Uh, it looked as though he might have picked up a knock at the end of the game, but thankfully, I don't think he has. And that, honestly, thank God for that. He's been terrific. You talk about Matic, you talk about Lukaku, you know, other players that have been uh, great this season, Martial, Rashford, etc. But Phil Jones, my God, thank, thank, honestly, oh my God, if we did not have him, there's no way we would have won those three points today. He was everywhere, he was intercepting, he was heading, clearing, tackling, everything. Phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, obviously we didn't really play very well today. Uh, we had a couple of chances, both felt at Lukaku, one of which was scored. Uh, Ashley Young, which is why he was playing at left back, puts in a really, really good cross for Lukaku and he breaks free of Holt. And uh, the first one's a great save, but then it rebounds and Lukaku smashes it in to make it eight out, eight in eight for Manchester United and a run of six games where he scored in each uh, for club and country, I think. Um, also, uh, just quickly, the last game against Burton, uh, I did actually watch that, and that was an unreal performance, 4-1. Uh, Marcia was phenomenal in that, but I went out that night, and yeah, I'm, I'm ill at the minute. I've got a bit of a cold. Uh, I don't know if you can tell if I'm snivelling or if my voice seems a bit off. Uh, that's why, so yeah, I just I by the time I could have uploaded a match review, it was like two days after, so it would have been a bit pointless, but... Um, Anyhow, so back onto this game. After that Lukaku chance, we did dominate for like 20, 25 minutes up until half time. Uh, we didn't really create too much else though. The only other notable chance we had was in the second half. I think it's Mikatarin plays in Lukaku and it's a nice save. Um, so unfortunately, that was about all we had. Southampton piled on the pressure. They brought on two more strikers towards the end of the game. Uh, they had long starting, of course, but then they brought on Gabby Hadini, they brought on Charlie Austin, but we held firm. Um, they peppered our goal with shots. Uh, they had a, their best chance, probably, well, three of them felt uh, uh, Romeo, but the best one was on target, and Fellaini heads it uh, off the line from a corner. Uh, Romeo missed from five yards twice, I think, in this game. Uh, one to the left of the goal, one to the right of the goal. Uh, De Gea didn't really have too much to do in terms of work, because the shot that was uh, obviously on target, Fellini managed to head wide, but the other ones were wide, so De Gea you know, didn't have to make any ridiculous saves. All the saves he made were fairly comfortable, but yeah. Um, it, it is a good sign that we can win while playing so shit, and yeah, this is one of those games where everyone will be like, oh yeah, this is Jose Mourinho, park the bus, because we did park the bus by the end of it. Um, and it's understandable why we were getting absolutely like dominated in the midfield. It shows why we missed Paul Pogba. I, I keep saying it, but it, it's true. Like without Paul Pogba, there was no real solidity. Like Fellaini's good in different aspects, but when Southampton are playing with five in the middle, um, and it's just Fellaini and Matic really there with the other four drifting forward for us, it, it's really hard to deal with and yeah that's why he brought on Herrera, he brought on Smalling and then later on Blind. Um, so yeah just to make sure we get three points which is the, the important part. We've played some phenomenal attacking football this season even in this game in the small period that we dominated it was clear to see that we are ruthless on the counter-attack. Absolutely ruthless sometimes. Yes we didn't really well we only scored one goal but it's there to see that we can turn on the, the counter-attack, the pace, instantly. And that's something we haven't had since Ferguson left. Um, certainly not under Louis van Gaal and David Moyes. And it's taken a year and a bit for Jose Mourinho's system to actually work. But yeah, we did park the versus this game. First game of the season that we've done that. And we've managed to come out with three points. So I'm happy enough. And yes, City won against Crystal Palace 5-0 this week. But if you look at the fixtures next week, Man City have Chelsea away. And we have Crystal Palace at home. So, you know, that goal difference, I'm fairly confident we will make it up. Again, uh, Crystal Palace have just been shocking. They haven't even scored a goal yet, I don't think, in the Premier League. I know they won their cup game, I think. They scored one in that. But, yeah, and also Fosu Mensa can't play. And he's been their only credible player because he's on loan. Like, I've seen a lot of their fans tweeting about how uh, much they like Fosu Mensa 
uh, but unfortunately he hasn't really been able to have a lasting effect because the rest of the team. So yeah, he's unavailable uh, to play us because obviously it's his parent team. Uh, United, so I'm confident next week and uh, one of or both Chelsea and Manchester City who are looking the other real contenders Spurs Liverpool just underneath um, but yeah like those two will drop points like one the other or both of them so that'll be good for us as long as we can beat Palace uh, we'll maintain well we'll go top officially regardless of what happens unless of course City absolutely molests Chelsea that's the only way that we won't go top but I, I can't see that happening it'll be a close game but anyway hopefully you have enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already like the video and yeah peace